the crystals of creation have revealed themselves. Evils emerge across the multiverse. The armies of the abyss gather. The Underdark's plans are near fruition. Chaos erupts across all spheres, and darkness descends on the plains. Alliances are forged in blood. The gods move avatars like pawns on a board, and unlikely heroes emerge to thwart the unstoppable. But will it be enough before the material plane crumbles? The hopes rest in a group of wayward adventurers. The battle of the Outlands awaits. Where did we last leave off? Well, our adventurers traveled to the Cogs and met Antos Keldoran, a dwarven blacksmith that asked if they could do him a favor and get back a family heirloom that was stolen from him. It was in an abandoned mine near the Dragon Towers of Caneth Forgehold. They snuck in and found a ritual that brought out the draconic ruins of the prophecy. But then a fire giant emerged and took out the beast trying to summon the draconic prophecy. After defeating their foes, Charles Calhoun deciphered the prophecy, which stated that Tiamat, mother of dragons, wants to summon her son to the glass plateau. Will our adventurers find the crystal of creation, discover the secret behind the draconic prophecies, or end up making a team of giants? Only time will tell. So I do believe we last left you off inside this cave. These ruins of this ceremony around you, these bricks that were flying around have descended to the ground. The draconic prophecy, which is the bright red uh, symbols that resembled from your book, uh, Jace, are slowly disappearing as the magic is beginning to fade. And you sit here with a couple of dead bodies in this giant fire giant is walking its way towards that black inky mass that it came from. What do you guys want to do here? Well, that's a, that's a giant. You can just let him go about his business. Okay. Uh, I'd like to look for my swords. Okay. Yeah. Can we, can, yeah, can Jay, the, like, the hammer? Yeah, yes. can Jay, uh, also, like, look around for uh, things? I don't know anything interesting like the things we're supposed to have. Okay, Kurgan, you do find a bunch of items. Now, we're gonna let the dice decide. Oh, no. Yes. You are gonna roll a D100. Between 80 and 100, you find everything that you have. Between 40 and 79, you lose one major item. Between 10 and 39, you lose one magic item. Between a nine and a zero, you keep only one magic item. Oh God. Can we get a zero for the homies? Here. Oh God, here we go. And 46. 46. That would be you find uh wait one major one major item. So what while you're deciding what major item that you're gonna have, and then you can bring it to me and I'll say that fits the criteria. Uh you decide, check it out. Let's go over to uh let's go Charles, what do you wanna do? I'm going to be real quick writing down the Draconic Prophecy in my okay. journal. Okay, you know, that's going to take a little bit. Okay, so yeah, Jay, yeah. what did you want to look for? Uh, Jay wants to look for, yeah, we were hired to like find a magic hammer or whatever. Jay yes. wants to look for that. Okay, you can roll me a 100-sided die in anything that's between 1 and tw over 25, you find it. Uh, natural one for the homies? Hey. Yeah. We found yeah, it. We, yeah, uh... we found it. It's very noticeable. It's got a very polished stone 
head to it and then the handles made out of bricks and the very end of the handle is an upside down anvil just like the schematics that Antos Keldoran showed you and you found it you can everyone can also roll me a 1d 100 for gold pieces d100 you said yep d100 for gold Yep, that seems about right. Uh, yeah, even <laughs> D-rolling got trash. 20, 12, and... Jordan. I got 61. 61. Okay. Have you decided the item you would like to give up? Oh, to give up? Oh, I thought I was get to keep. You um, lose. You lose one major item. Doesn't have to be magical. So it could be the Juzba device. It could be. If that's what you want. I keep forgetting that I have this thing in the first place. So I'm gonna say I I leave that. Okay. So somebody had found it when and went through it and like, ooh, this looks in interesting and ran off with it. But the rest of your stuff, you have. Wait, All right. what did lose? He, that juice bud device, which is a uh, uh, backpack. The thing I put on my back that allowed me to cast spells. Yeah. Oh yeah, chuck in the trash. <laughs> okay. You have a sword. You don't need that. All right, so, um, uh, Jay, why don't you roll me a perception? Since, Ooh. yeah. You know, we could still get that daddy one. Ah, uh, no, a 31. <laughs> so, Close. this fire giant stepped into this inky blackness, and then stepping out is a familiar half giant to you with tentacle face and root, like these tribal symbols of your tribe and he goes uncle i'm so glad you are on our side the giants and the delkier joining forces come meet us in the glowing chasm thune awaits uh, uh Jay, do you know this guy? Uh, counterpoint K. No. <laughs> oh, this is K. Uh, I'm, I'm Charles. We haven't met yet. Mm. It is always a pleasure to add more to our forces. Join us. Join us. Join us. Kirkin yes. comes back from around the corner, finally having all his swords, like, Hey guys, I found everything! I lost yep. that, uh, that big backpack thing, but... Oh, shit! Yeah, family reunion here. Are you guys gonna um, do anything? Uh, now, Kay, um, I know I probably haven't been the best uncle, but... I must say, I don't like the company you're keeping. Uh, mind flares aren't exactly known for being good. And humans have, and you make your rounds with them, they have caused just as much destruction as us, even more. Wherever they go, they're just parasites. At least we admit what we are. And I don't ally with either of them. I don't ally with humans that keep slaves. And I don't ally with humans that kidnap and murder innocent people. Life or humans and feeds, brains, I assume. Life feeds on life. It always will and always has. Survival of the fittest, the strongest, and we are that. The perfect race. We're good, but survival of the fittest leads you to a certain point. At a certain point, you have to start living. And I wouldn't be able to live with myself knowing that I work with murderers, kidnappers, and slavers. Well then, you must no longer be alive. Until then, if you want to see me, meet me in the glowing chasm. And he takes 
a step back and kind of the inky mass absorbs him and then the mass shivers and starts to shrink and then gone i must be not alive i mean come on i'm bad at quips and even i know that was garbage <laughs> so that was the guy that y'all were telling me about before yeah, yeah it he... was i thought it'd be smarter that whole monologue of his just ended up basically being life needs a life to live <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's i mean technically he is right life does need things to live but you know I feel like he could have made a much better, I don't know, persuasive argument. So the He's mind flares are working with the giant? <laughs> yeah, the mind flares are working. Oh, that's concerning. I Did we do bad here? Like, I know I was working with the giant, but if K was working with him, I feel like we did bad here. Well, these guys here were going to, like, sacrifice me. Yeah, but... That's fair. You know what? I'm going to say that this might have been a side where both sides were evil. Enemy of my enemy helps me stay alive sort of thing. Yes, but isn't our friend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you find the hammer? Oh yeah, it's right here. Jay will hold it Are we it all looking for a hammer? Uh, yeah, um... Yeah, uh, it, well, a hammer and you, of course. <laughs> we... Uh, we mostly wanted to rescue you, because we definitely knew you were down here. Aw, oh, thanks. Oh, you know what, speaking of, uh, weapons, uh, here's that, uh, dagger back. I don't need it anymore. Yay. Do you throw it at him? <laughs> catch. <laughs> hey, 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 throw it at me. I want to see if Jay can catch it. Uh, okay, it's a plus nine. I've already deleted it from my inventory, but this should work. That's a 28 to hit. I will use a reaction and oh. attempt to pluck it out of the air. Yay, like the first time I've done this in like five levels. Right? Are you going to send it back like a missile? Uh, that didn't it just roll. throws it back at him. <laughs> uh, 19, which cancels any damage you would do even if you roll back. Nice. Okay, so yeah, Jay just catches it and then cheats it. I think that's exactly the maximum amount of damage I could do anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, Charles, why don't you roll me a perception, please? Oh, okay. Five. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. Okay, so you hear running down, and all of a sudden... A whole oh, horde yeah. of these black-eyed gangs. There is at least, what is that? Uh, five, six, seven, eight, and then 10, 12, 14. So 15 of them. And then 16, one over here. And they are running down, screaming bloody murder towards you guys. What are you doing? guys round two. Are we running? Can we just say we hate, like, the giants again or something? Yeah. I, I think it's past that. I think it's either run or fight. I think we run. I don't want to deal with these guys. Oh, fine. We, yeah, it's not even... Yep, you have one more teleport up for the day. I don't think he teleported. Uh, hey, uh, get Kerrigan out of here. I'll just huff it. All right. What, you certain? Mm -hmm. Can't we all just, like, can't they beam us all up at once? Nah, let's save the teleport in case something bad happens. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. All right, hold on tight. Oh, they're on both ends. Okay, and what are you using? What skill? Well, I was trying to teleport, but they're on both sides. Well, you have Dimension Door, right? Well, yeah, but... That's 500 feet. That's definitely, you can get out of there. Yeah, you measuring can distances. Get pretty much a little bit out of the cave. Let's just go straight up. That'll work, right? <laughs> yeah, right into some rock. I think it won't allow you. And just. Uh, yeah, you, can't, you can't teleport into solid objects. Yeah, I think it just 
squirts you back to where you can. Alright. Well, you then, uh, straight up, out. We'll go, uh, 500 feet. We didn't go that far deep, did we? No, Sorry. I'd say total okay. with a decline, you jumped down about 40 from these. So I'd say about 60 to 70 feet descent from where you entered. All right. Well, well let me see how far it is from the entrance. It's like 200 feet. No, entrance is up here. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Big map. Yo. All right, so we'll just go... Oh, but still less than 500. So we'll just bam back to the entrance. Okay. Why don't you roll me a percentage die to see how good you were, where you uh, bamfed. Higher the better, lower the worse. Well, nine. Oh, buddy. (laughs) Okay. So with a nine, you entered right in the middle of a bunch of these teenagers and they were told to stay on alert because some commotion is down and they have their weapons out as you both, as you step out. Uh, Let's see, there is a total of, ooh, man, 10. Ten of these guys. So, describe how that happened, and then Jay, you you're up next. All right. So, I jumped down from the ruins, put my notebook up, grab Kier again, think for a second about where I'm going, but then I also think, oh wait, there's a bunch of teenagers right there. But as I'm thinking that, I already throw down the rune and it bursts, and like we get smoked in, and then poofed back out. Surrounded by the teenagers right next to the entrance. Yeah. And Jay, what are you doing? Uh, Jay has the ingenious plan. It's called, I'm faster than you nerds, bye. Um, he will bonus (laughs) action, disengage. Okay. Uh, and he will, um, uh, go, all right, so what's, what's the distance? He can go with an action dash, that's a hundred feet. So he can probably go like... Yeah, around there-ish. Okay. So zoom, and now he's up there. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, from there, you can see that, and that, and let's see. Uh, yeah, you can see that. Okay. So they're like, get them! So they can move 30 feet, but they're going to dash, so that's 60. So, Jay, or Charles and Kurgan, 10 teenagers, they got their daggers out. They look at you, they, they, they're kind of scared. What are you doing? Um, all in melee range, so they will get opportunity attacks if you... All right. You know what? I'm, I'm going to lean go into my, like, uh, demonic visage here. I'm just going to, like, boo with my, like, horns and weird eyes and tail and whatever. Okay. Yeah, and I'll, I'll show my fangs and my glowing eyes and kind of lean okay. into the... That would be intimidation, horror. for sure. Ooh. The, I'll, I'll, I'll is, uh, you roll. Is Calhoun uh, helping me with that? So I would have yeah. you both roll on this one. Make it straight, both rolls. All right. Well, that could have better. Oh. Nice, oh. 17. Oh. And I got 14. I know. Okay, here they go. Charles, They're still the will. best face. Oh, they are nervous. So we are going to do out of the D10. We'll roll a D10 again. Eight of them start like backing away out of you know, like take a te- like two steps back so let's say they're five feet away two of them now are next to you all right and since that they're gonna make an attack one at calhoun does a 17 hit uh that is my ac 
Wow, nice. So that like, hits. With a four. He's like, you cowards, come on. And he slams his dagger right into your side. And then this one's going for you, Kerrigan. Come on. How's my guy? Five. Yeah, you have you have to ask uh, Charles how he did that. He surprised me. Yeah, uh, I gotcha. So five. So how do you block? Yeah, that this? misses. Yeah, how do you block that? Uh, I don't know. I guess like I just like flex my bicep or whatever, so he just he doesn't he like stabs me, but it like only goes in like I don't know like a few millimeters, and I just flex, and it just stops right there. Beautiful. All right, Jay, you're up. What are you doing? All right. So, Jay, um, uh, will, uh, spend another key point to bonus action dash and action dash, okay. and Jay will go zzz, zzz, right there. Oh, my so, gosh. Okay, hold on. Boop. I think it's, yeah, right there. Yeah. And you can see that. Just give me a Actually, Yo, Jay just moved 150 feet I in know. six seconds. I know. It's not fair. D&D is just not fair to my humanoids. Okay, but... What? Let's see, 60. Oh, I like it. All right. How about that for you? What do you got? Ooh, all right. I see you. I see the shenaniganery. And, and, oh, and I'm there. I'm there with these two. All right, so they can't attack because they dashed, but they're right on you. Melee, melee distance. Okay. Okay, so while you ponder what you want to do next, they rushed up to block your way from the entrance. Two guards make their way right up to you jay but we're gonna go back to the two teenagers that held their ground what is charles and kirgan going to do here all right poor little kids uh i mean that takes time gonna... i want to kill him yeah yeah me definitely not me neither uh maybe just Lightly maimed them. <laughs> Teach them yeah. a lesson. So I'll, uh, I'll just kind of turn to the one that hit me, and my eyes will flash, and I'll cast Mind Sliver at him. And he needs to roll a 17 intelligence. That's not gonna so, happen. And I'm sorry, buddy, this is gonna hurt. I'm That's watching. nine damage. Okay, not dead. He, he like holds his hands to his head and it's like this migraine from the hell and blood is starting to come out of one of his ears and just drip down his chin. And I'll just go, it's not worth it, bud. Okay, well, why don't you roll me a, an intimidation or persuasion, your choice, and I will- Oh, well, well, well. Negative one for both. We'll do another intimidation with a seven. Nope, not gonna happen. He's like, fuck you. Fair enough. All right. It is Kiergan. What are you doing? Uh, I'm just gonna slap the guy who stabbed me in the chest. Okay. You're not gonna slap him in the chest. 17 to hit. So. No, I'm slapping him <laughs> in the face. Yeah. 17 okay. to hit. 17 hits. That's five damage. And I'm okay. just gonna say, leave. Okay, roll your intimidation, and I will roll mine. Three, damn. Good old nip slap oh, for the sake. boys. That's a 12, I got less than last time. Yeah, well, that, he's like, you got it, you got it. Now there's just one left, and he's like, you two, Sam, you coward. He's like, spits out some blood. He's like, I guess I'll have to take him on myself. And he takes uh, um, his dagger, and he's going to swing at you, Charles, again. I've got two attacks per action, so... Oh, oh okay. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, you want... Just yeah. slap his nip some slap. more. Yeah, I'll slap the second kid. I'm okay. going to slap, slap the other kid. <laughs> Go for like, it. 19 to hit. Oh, oh, no. That hits. Another five damage. I'm just going to say, oh. leave. It's, <laughs> yeah, but he's... 
Now he's got a little bravado and he's holding it to 20. He takes, he's down to his last breath almost and he takes his dagger, he hits you, Charles, and... Uh, uh, wait one second. Yep, Let's okay. see if I have any charges in my book that you hate. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, so I'm going to teleport just 10 feet away from him. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. All right. Yeah, you can use it. I'm using up your charges here. Okay. You yeah, back yeah. away. And we're going to Jay. What are you doing? All right, Jay will uh, spend another key point and oh, wait, bonus. Wait, wait a minute. Is it these guys? These guys down here go after me. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, you're right. Um, I will uh, bonus action disengage again. Yeah. And we'll go a hundred feet, which I believe you. Uh, you got to go around them. Or you're going to get I, opportunity attacks. I have disengaged, so I don't provoke opportunity attacks, so Is I can go right through them. right away, and then disengage is uh, broken, and then use your running through? I don't think disengage... Uh, disen is, disengage is against... You do not take opportunity attacks while you move. Uh, really? If you take the disengage action, your movement does not provoke opportunity attacks for the rest of the turn. I never knew that. That's amazing. What a skill. Yep. Oh, yep. you so, uh, a bitch. So, yo, uh, see you later. Okay. Zoom. Describe how you just disengage from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten swinging swords at you. How'd you so, uh, Jake kind of prepares himself and then, uh, just like dodges and does like normal dodging out of the two that are right next to him. And then as he goes through, um, he moves up uh, his limbs and his tattoos flare and just a wall of air surrounds him as he just charges through the entire group ahead. That was amazing. And you're doing like uh, the matrix around all these <laughs> swords as they're like, Yo. one's going towards your legs, you're, you lift up. Okay, we're going back outside right now. The teenager is on his last breath. He just swung again, but Charles dodged and moved out of the way. What are you guys doing? Here, Gordon, you want to take care of this punk? Kid again? Yeah, I can do that. Shouldn't be too <laughs> difficult. <laughs> I was like, did the punk get you? Um, and can I see them coming yet? Because we're like right outside of this entrance, right? Uh, perception. Okay. Okay, you'll hear the thunderous footsteps yeah, of a sneaky J. Looking, looking for a hot. Oh, that's pretty close to what I wanted. One is 17. Yeah. You can't see them, but you hear a lot of yelling like, get that son of a bitch. Get, get, what the hell? <laughs> like, <laughs> so you All hear right. a lot of frustrated yelling and screaming in the dark. Okay. But it's getting louder, what so is, you know it's approaching. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well then. All right. Yeah. I'll just let Kurgan get that guy. All and, right, uh, Kurgan. Go for it. I keep on forgetting the wrong mute. Okay. I'm just gonna slap this guy again because why not? Yeah. Whoa, that hits. Go for damage. I think damage is automatic, isn't it? I think it's five. Yeah, I think damage is always yeah. five for me. It's yeah, like your strength mod yeah. plus one. So why uh, do you want to make it lethal here? No, I don't want to make it lethal. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so how do you knock this let him thing do out? It. How do you knock this guy out? I just like give him a, a big slap right across the face, right where I've been slapping him before. It's yeah. nice, red and stinging and probably a bit swollen. Yeah, and he does like this twirl and then lands in a, like, a limp body on the ground. And all the other guys just scatter and hightail it out of there. So he just ragdolls. Yeah. And... Brilliant. Yep. And Jay, I think that's, that's up to you here. What are you doing? 
Alright, well Jay, uh, Jay still got key points, so Jay will bonus action disengage, and, uh, another 100 feet of movement. Uh, goodbye, I am off the map. Yeah, and you Bing. are outside, and, uh, you, you, you guys, you see Jay is just a blur out. You gonna say anything, Jay? <laughs> I got a lot of people on my tail, you guys should probably start running. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's, so you guys need to probably stealth at some point at these guys are getting it out, or do you guys want to just run and try to out outrun them? Jake can 100% outrun these fools. Yeah, you can. I think Charles could too. Okay. You guys Don't can just tell them. You can teleport yeah, don't away. Don't have movement bonuses. Uh, Kirkin does because he's a barbarian. If you have I more just, than yeah, I have thirty-five. Yeah, and I think Kirkin has forty. So you'd be the slowest, but you also can teleport. So yeah, I mean, we can just have. I've also got eighteen strength, so <laughs> I could probably carry him. <laughs> Yo, and we dip and we run. Okay, I say we run. Okay. So I need to we'll make this fast. Uh, deck save or check from or uh, athletics. I'll I'll take the deck save. Okay, Dex, you're good. Yeah. Looking for yeah. 15. 15. Okay. Here okay. comes my athletics. There you go. Or oh, athletics. Oh, for yes. fuck's sake. Okay. So, <laughs> um, wait, wait, wait. I think I can still. Yeah, we're gonna. I see him kind of start to stumble, yeah, and I'll reach back to my tattoos of player, and I'll turn everybody back just a couple seconds does, and let him try again. Does just just Kurgan, not everybody? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Just Kurgan. Okay. So, so hit Kurgan. the VCR rewind. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Yo, okay. Hey, it's Explain it's not this. worse. <laughs> explain that. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you explain that one, Kurgan. Okay. Yeah. Explain. Okay. So, I'm I'm uh, starting to run. Um, uh, but as I'm doing it, I get a bit distracted, and I'm gonna slip on like a. Uh, some pieces of loose gravel. Everything winds back a little bit, but I don't notice this. I'm somehow in the same position, and I was just gonna like try and uh, uh, catch myself with my other foot as I started to fall, but that just failed. So I kind of just do like a bit of a split on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as he does, these guys are up and out. They point. They see Kurgan on the ground. He's like, there, there's one of them. We just captured the guy. And the guy's like, yeah, look at this great backpack that I got from that dude. And he's, <laughs> and uh -oh. he's, he's like, get him. And they're all running towards you. And um, I, yeah. I will run towards Kurgan. And uh... so you got to run back because he he, yes, he didn't, yes. wasn't able to dash. He used only his movement, fell down, and he's prone. Yes. I'll run up to him. To dash. Oh, well. And put my hand on him, and then I'll wait until they're next to us before I cast Thunder Step. Eh. Okay. And so, yeah, they, they make it right up to you guys, swords out. And what does Thunder Step do. So I'll pull out another one of my runes, and as soon as they get right within a couple feet, like five feet, ten feet, whenever they get within, sorry, ten feet of me, I'll throw the rune up in the air, and lightning will strike it and come down and strike us, and there's a big boom, and then we appear 90 feet away, still running, and all of them need to make con saves or take okay. 3d10 thunder damage. Okay, con save coming. We're gonna add a four to this mm -hmm. roll. 16? Fails. Okay, so how many, roll the damage? What was it, 18? 18. Oof, so just explodes into this like B-rated movie where people are just flying everywhere uh, as debris flies up 
into the air and as the dust clears, they are all just thrown on the ground. Not enough to really hurt them so they're incapacitated, but it takes a while for them to cough up and then they get back up, they grab in their weapons, they get back to their feet. They're like, oh my God. And now they're they're kind of making their way out under their feet. So, yeah, and, and we're 90 feet away. And you're, nope. and yeah, back to Rona. Okay. <laughs> and why don't you try, Jay, what are you doing? You're way ahead now. Yeah, I Jay just you. like goes down to a sensible jog for him, which is yep. sprinting for anyone else. Uh, and we'll just begin kind of just jogging back to the ship once, uh, once he hears the uh, explosion behind him. Yeah. Okay. So you're just. And Jay, not... Jay will hear. Uh, but we'll hear Charles's voice go. Wait, don't we have to return the hammer? Yeah, that it. And <laughs> Jay goes. Oh yeah, that's why we were in there. Uh, and then Jay will uh, change his course to go uh, go back to the hammer. Yeah. Who? who yeah, hammer, the hammer. I think Jay did. Yeah, I think you have the hammer. Hey, so time to go to the store. Yeah, okay. So you're heading to the store, and we'll just say that you made it away uh, from these guys and met up somewhere closer towards the store. Cal Keldoran Forge of Magnificent Wares is right in front of you. You're in the, like, the uh, the district where all the mining is there and the there's blacksmiths everywhere but this dwarf sitting there is holding his uh anvil or holding his hammer and hitting down on the anvil sparks are flying everywhere as you approach hey we got your hammer i do you now let me see and he uh takes his glove off and puts it down and looks up He's got soot all in his face, and he's like, let me see here. Do you give it to him? Yep, Jay will hand the hair off. Okay, and you, you hit, you give him the hammer, he looks it over and he's like, you see that he holds it for a second, and those that know Arcanus know that he's attuning to this thing, and he goes, I, it's not the best hammer, but it was me grandfather's. And if he was a good man, I do thank you. And a little tear is beginning to well up a little bit in his eyes. He's like, I do owe you something. I, so what be it? Is it the adamantine armor? That chime of opening? The Brass Horn or Valhalla? Or is it the Sunblade? Which do you choose? I mean, I think we should take the Horn of Valhalla. I mean, that one or the Chime of Opening. That could be handy. I see yeah. you have swords over there, Tiefling. I don't see many around, but I do see those swords. The Sunblade would go well for you. He has like 80 swords, he does not need another sword. But this sword is unlike any other sword. But hey. Yeah, so are all his other swords. <laughs> yeah, he has like 80 different unique and crazy swords. I really do. Um, so... Uh, Kurgan, what do you think? 10 openings of some locks, or... Uh, summoning a lot of warriors once a week? I mean, the summoning thing can be very useful in, like, a pinch. Uh, the locks... Eh, I mean, I'm kind of biased here, but I want, like, the warriors. Yeah, um, couldn't we just... Oh, if we're... I mean, if we're... If we're really worried about locks, can we just get you a scroll of knock or something? Oh, yeah, I mean, we could do that. I just figured... It might be handy, but... But I can see... The appeal on the horn. Let's go for it. All right, we'll take your uh, heirloom. So, thanks for the horn. I well, I do appreciate it. 
And if you ever are back down in the cogs, come see me. I do appreciate your help. You might want to be on the lookout for, like, dragon cultists or something. Uh, so you might just want to, like, lay low and be on your guard for a couple days. You got it. I do want and need a vacation. Maybe it's time for one. Perfect timing. I hear the Skyway is a beautiful place. Never been there. Maybe I should check it out. Damn, what time is it now about? It is early evening, say 4.35ish. Guys are cool. getting hungry. Uh, Jay will, I guess, add it to the fort horn to his inventory, by the by. Okay. All right, uh, should we start heading back to the ship and prepare for our train ride? Uh, yeah, let's, let's head back. So, somebody roll me a 1d4. How many hours it takes you to make it back? I got it. Oh, you got oh. it. Uh, two. Two hours. So, it is six o'clock by the time you make it up on top of the, uh, out of the cogs and then realize your ship isn't there anymore. Dang it. Jay will message, uh, uh, what's, uh, I, I'm blanking on the name. How am I blanking on the name? Uh, Talk. Talk said, uh, yeah. He's there. He's uh, there. yeah, um, just realized we were walking back to the ship and the ship isn't there. Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to park it there anymore. We did get attacked, so we are above the planet. So we are just hovering up here, waiting for to figure out what you want. Bye can I, time. can I insight check him to see if he's under distress? With disadvantage, because you can't see it, is this voice, so, and it's high to see, so go ahead. 26. Wow. I rolled no. a natural 20 and an 18. No. So what you can get with that nice roll is that you guys discussed what you guys wanted to do, and you did suggest that you probably hover above the planet seemed the best course. So you did give him an order, so he took an executive <laughs> decision and just hightailed it out of there and now is not under any duress. He's just made the decision that it's the safest place to be. All right. Well, well do y'all want to find the end down here or teleport up there? I mean, I, I can come back down there and pick you guys up, uh, but it's going to take a little bit. I think we should find an end down here. I think it'd be easier that way. I do believe Timmy said that the suite's still there. He had to leave early, so it's still, uh, still paid for for the rest of the week you got another three days uh okay um all right hey guys we have the suite for three days so i'm gonna just chill there until tomorrow yeah 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 might as well okay so by the time you make it to the green dragon inn you can roll me another d4 for another Charles, Charles, you got this? I yeah. got it. It's going to be super fast. You have four. Oh, no, two. another two hours? Okay, Eight. another two hours of wandering. Um, I said probably getting hungry on the way there, so they're probably picking up some food on the way there. Um, yeah, I'm looking out for, like, any hot dog stands or that sort of thing. If you're going hot more... dogs, give me a copper. Uh, yes. <laughs> what do you want to eat? What do you guys want to eat? Uh, frick another bag of popcorn. Oh, yeah, size yeah. popcorn. That's another uh, couple of copper. Three copper. Okay. What else? Kurgan, what are you eating? Uh, uh, I don't know. What do they got? Anything. Yeah, this is anything you... It's is a, like New York City. Any type of food is out there. Street vendors galore. Pizza? Okay, yeah. Different types of doughy pizza, by the slice, a couple of copper. 
You guys are munching and you make it there and it's about eight o'clock at night. The place is hopping. There is music being played. I need wisdom saving throws from everyone, please, as you're going in. Looking for a 15 for your wisdom oh, saving throw. Beautiful, Charles. Didn't affect you. Jay, beautiful. 20. And Kurgan. Oh, um, and Kurgan. I'm having a lot of luck today, aren't I? Oh, Kurgan, you're walking in there and you want to spend some cash right now. What do you, like, Empty, not the whole purse, but it's time for you to buy some stuff, buy some beers and all of that. All right, I'm just gonna like say, hey, you guys know what? We did pretty good today. I enjoyed that. Thanks for rescuing me. I'm buying you guys some drinks. Okay. I'll and to that. How much gold do you have on you right now? Uh, inventory. 14 gold, 5 silver. Okay. You're We're probably going to spend like 7 gold right now. Like, so just like buying drinks phone. for people and having a good time, talking about your adventures, and people are just toasting you, and, and the music is having a good time. And Jay, what do you want to do? Uh, Jay will, uh, go up to his room. Okay. And... Uh, Jay, yeah. Jay is not a party person. You... It's quiet. Everything's been moved. Uh, all the crates have been moved. There's plenty of space now. Uh, and what do you want to do in this suite? Uh, Jay will first, um, look around and make sure no one's... None of the black-eyed gang is trying to beat his head in. <laughs> Perception. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, can we finally get that natural one for the homies? No, no. Unfortunately, we can't. And everything seems pretty good. Pretty empty. Nothing. Nothing around. All right. Uh, Jay will then just take a short rest. Okay. So, Charles, what is what are you doing? I'll hang down there and party for a bit. Okay. Uh, and then I'll. Excuse myself back to my dorm and take out the draconic prophecy and examine that for a bit and try to like cross examine it okay. with the uh, Atlas of Endless Horizons and uh, see if I can reveal anything. Yep. Every time you wanted to buy a drink, Kirkin's like, nope, this one's on me and bought drinks for you. So you didn't have to pay anything for any of your drinks. Yeah, my man. Like, on my tab and now you're upstairs and I give me a constitution saving throw I want to see how you're feeling here from yeah. drinking. two nat 20s in a row whoa nice okay I need a I need to how's your hunger I need to know that that was for the hunger no no that was for your alcohol. No. Okay, I'll so hunger. another one for my hunger. Yes, please. Oh boy. You can. Seventeen. That's good. You're fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Now you wanted to read your book. You, is that what you said? Yeah, and like read it and read the draconic prophecies that I wrote down, and just see if I can gleam anything. Okay. So, do you want to read the draconic prop? You don't really have not enough time to read both to f really figure it out for you to yeah. understand it you gotta pick one well then i'll do the prophecy because that's new okay so roll me um investigation with the straight give me a straight 14, 14. Mm, it's hard for you to figure it all out what you do know is that there is a mother of all dragons that has a son that she is calling to meet. And this son is prophesized to arrive on Eberron. And that's, that's all you can really figure that's out. That's a glass plateau, right? That's yeah. what I got last yep. time. Yes. Okay. At the glass plateau to meet there. 
That's all right. I can't really figure anything out from that. Okay. All right. And Jay, you wanted to do what was that? Uh, Jay's just taking a short rest after sure. spending so much yeah. key point. Yeah, you're fine. Your short rest is up as he's investigating. And uh, Kurgan, roll me a constitution with disadvantage. I want to see how much you're drinking because you're spending money. And that would be a 12. So not quite blacked out, but you are like tipsy. You you haven't been this drunk in a while. You're kind of slurring your speech. You're it's hard for you to really uh, stand up without like tipping to the sides. What are you doing? Uh, I don't know. I, I guess I'm like uh, <laughs> trying to hit on like the barmaid or something. Okay. Why not? Okay. Uh, roll me a charisma check. Just straight charisma? Yeah. Yeah, give me a straight charisma. Eight. 18. Oh, yes. Okay, you are working your magic. She is, oh, she's batting her eyes up at you. She's got her hands, her head in her hands, looking up at you, biting her lower lip, and just mesmerized. And uh, another barmaid winds up a towel, smacks her in the butt, and is like, get to work, Bella. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I'll be right back. And she she heads off and you see her working, handing out more drinks. OK, I guess I'm going to be staying up for a little bit longer until she gets off shift or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. OK. And anything else anybody wants to do? Uh, yeah, Jay will just uh, after taking the short rest. Uh, yep. <laughs> Go down and to make sure no one's um, uh, no one's getting into any bar fights without him, okay. uh, specifically the party members. But then we'll head back up when everyone else does. Yeah. Uh, you see, Kurgan has made some acquaintances. You kind of she he she uh, wants him to come with her out of the bar after her shift has ended. And Kurgan, are you gonna go? I'm drunk, of course I'm gonna go. And Jay, are you just gonna let him go? Jay will um, do the creepiest thing possible <laughs> and and uh, stealthily follow him to make sure okay. he doesn't get stabbed in the Give me your stealth versus his perception. All right, can we, I get advantage, so I'm wanting snake eyes right now. Aww. 28, that's gonna be, no, it's straight, right? Oh no, you get it. Uh, I, have, I have advantage because you yep. gave me a cloak of the guy. Perception, can you give me a natural 20? I can't 20? even beat that. You can get a natural 20 if that's that's gonna beat it. I don't think I will. <laughs> nope. No, okay, so very, okay. So it's like, I can see like, it's dark, it's late, and like, Jay is tiptoeing behind a dumpster. Then he tiptoes behind like a garbage can, and then tiptoes like behind a lamppost, <laughs> and all the way to uh, this shop where uh, there's this like fire escape up the side, and they she walks up the fire escape and to her apartment. Okay, what are you doing? Uh, not Kurgan. I know what Kurgan's doing. Jay, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, um, Jay will not be a, a peeping Tom. He's not that bad, uh, but he will be around in case, I don't know, someone gets flown out of, uh, thrown out a window. Got it. Who so knows what can happen. Yeah, so you're just, like, leaning back. There's a park bench across the street. Gives you a good vantage point. You're kind of, like sitting there it's dark you see a, co a guard comes up to you and says is, is everything okay uh yeah everything's fine i'm just relaxing okay well there's no sleeping on the bench uh, you're allowed to sit but if we catch you sleeping we're gonna have to uh have you move got it uh yeah i can i can wait and the guards let you be make their way out uh charles you know, no more studying because you did all your studying, but a little bit 
a little bit of time here. Or are you doing anything? Well, uh, I go down to keep to keep partying with my, all my buddies. You, yeah, you get gone. down, and it's it, they're not there. So I guess, huh, I guess they uh, went to bed, and I'll. I guess I'll take a look around at all of the people in the tavern and see if there's any sketchy folk or anything. Yeah, perception. It's the uh, Green it. Dragon Inn. They're, yeah. They're, they're sketchy people. There's everybody's got a, like, is the guy with one eye and, and uh, no hands drinking uh, a, a mug of ale with his elbows? Like, he looks like pretty dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Or is the dwarf who is, uh, got, uh, like, a beard braided down into two, like, like points, and he's got his big axe over on his back. He looks pretty sketchy, but they're, they're, everybody's having a good time drinking. All right. Well, that's what's important. Okay. So I'll just, uh, go ahead and grab another drink and then I'll just go to bed I guess okay be like oh all right nice night <laughs> and Jay are you staying up on the bench all night what are you doing he's not he's that bad. bad he'll at what po at what time of the night is this uh at this point it's got to be almost one in the morning all right at this point yeah Jay will leave and let let him do whatever he hasn't been immediately shanked, and no messages come, so <laughs> it's good, most likely. Yep. Okay. And let's see. Uh, for your long rest, you need to get up. If it's, let's say, it took twenty minutes to get back, so it's like, what is that? Uh, nine a.m. ish. Yeah, nine a.m. ish for you to get up. And. Uh, and what time's the uh, train ride? Um, it's tomorrow. Did I say afternoon? I think. No, I said I tomorrow think morning. So. I, think I said tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Uh, Don't worry, Jay can run and catch up to the train. But before you wake up, Jay, you have a weird dream. There is a shadow outlined figure with light and sur with that surrounds him and surrounding that light is a mass of disembodied eyes that are constantly shifting and swirling around this figure towers above you and looks down on you. You. You are the one that I am looking for. I am the eye blinder, and I am looking for the mark of death. My name, Paratai. Find the path of light or be consumed by the force of the dreaming dark. 67 Curie escaped from our home world to rebel. We are here to fulfill the prophecy, bring back our home world. The quarry shall live again. Find the path of light. And then the dream disappears and the void returns. If you want me to spell any of that out, I will. Uh, yo, Paratai? Uh, tar Taratai. T A R A T A I. D and D man, Taratai. That's how I say it. What do you say that? That. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh Taratai. It might Taratai. be Taratai. Taratai, Taratai, Taratai Sarah. Yeah, kind of like that. It's D and D man. I, some of these names. 
and the cur curry is Q U O R I. And our quarry shall live again, or our curry shall live curry. again? Our curry shall live. I always pronounced it quarry, but oh, that's quarry. Fine. Yeah, it's fine. Quarry could be curry quarry. D and D, man, they give great names to try and say out loud. Yeah, trust me. Oh my god, you wake up. It is nine o'clock. All right, time to get up and catch a train. Let's go catch this train. Okay. All you had to do was follow the damn train scene. <laughs> yeah, right? So, it's not hard to know where the uh, train station's at. Like, there's maps. Easily just talk to people in the Green Dragon Inn, and they'll, like, oh, yeah, easily. It's on the outskirts of Sharn. Um, so, as you make your way down, plenty of time to get there. Uh, you see this concourse. And the first thing you see is this unicorn on like a shield. And it says, House Orange, Lightning Rail Station of Sharn. And there are hundreds of people already this early in the morning. It's probably about 10, 10.30 by the time you get there. And they're milling in a lot of people with suitcases. Warforged carrying a lot of suitcases. There, uh, there is this mosaic of a unicorn on the f this floor, and there's a merry-go-round with kids on it. Of course, there's unicorns on this merry-go-round going up and down fountains. And what catches your eye, Jay, is that the bright flash, and you look over, and there's a teleportation circle and there's these rich people dressed in these fancy garbs and they're step onto the circle with their suitcase and people clear this and then whoop, they teleport away so we're supposed to go on this train and then what does anyone recall yeah they said that it would be on the train something we were looking for they were very vague I think we just go and beat whatever the hell it is up and then take it. Well, we should see what it is first. There might be information. We could talk to them. Uh, we could not talk to them. But, I mean, first things first is get on the train, right? Yeah, first things first, getting on the train. Now, look down. Which train are we supposed to get on? And is it in the station? Yep. There is the signs that keep changing of like, the departing train, seven o'clock, heading to Andar. Put departing train, it's heading out to passage, five o'clock, you know? And it keeps mm -hmm. saying, and there's so, um, you do have tickets, so <laughs> might tell you where to go. Yep. Uh, to the train that we're supposed yep. to go to. So you... Oh, and uh, real quick, while we're doing yeah, this, let's all have another bite of this bread. Oh, yo, more. Too. So Heroes feast bread. If you use this hero feast bread, that's it for the bread. You can't just keep nibbling at it. So, like... No, 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 yeah. This is the second eat. loaf, right? Yep. So you, he let you try it. You got Hero's Feast, gave you another loaf. Do you want to use it now? Uh, yeah, time to... Okay. Might as well. Pass this loaf around, and you guys now have Hero's Feast. Uh, I shall roll the 2d10. Hey, everyone. Nice. nice. 16 max HP on top of their normal stuff. Yay. Beautiful. Sweet. So now back above a hundred. As you guys are munching on this uh, bread, there's this man. He's very cocky, and he's talking to this beautiful uh, twenty-year-old who's just looking around. She's like, "I've never been to on a lightning rail before." And he's like, "Oh, this, this isn't a big station. The one in Passage is in Undar. That, that 
that is a huge station. Let me tell you, I've traveled the world. And he starts bragging as you guys are eating this loaf of bread as you're passing by. Mm. Oh, this guy. Delicious uh, bread. Mm, love this bread. <laughs> <laughs> And you make it on to, from the concourse to the station. There are these ever bright lanterns that are casting this golden light. And the floor has a rose marble terrazzo type marble. It's, uh, if you guys don't know what that is, it's like a bunch of different types of granite and stone meshed together and there's the ceiling is 18 feet high with these open arched colonnades and covering these conductor stone paths are this 25 foot high arched opening and you see these lightning rail this train it's hovering over these stone blocks and it's these lightning is flashing up underneath it as it comes to a stop and screech for a halt, he's like, all aboard. What class are our tickets? Are they like first class? Um, it's hard for you to say what class. It just has like a number, uh, train number. It says train number 17, suite A. All right. Uh, is that ours right there, Jay? That train 17? Uh, right now you're at 100, it seems. It looks at you straight ahead. And what you see at 100 is uh, pretty common folk. And you see that it goes down to like uh, 150. And you look down to your right where the numbers are heading in the upward trajectory. And it seems like lower and lower class towards the higher end. Hmm of the numbers. Got it. All right, interesting. Lower, higher number means lower class. Dang it, so we have to ride with the rich folk? Yeah, we'll fit in so well there. All right, so I got another. There, we're gonna meet some more people who have never seen a tiefling in their lives. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> And they're gonna get, oh no, someone with tattoos. Alright, let's go punch a bunch of ballroom dancers, I guess. Train 17. Okay, so you head over to the higher section and you see there are people with tux uh, suits on and servants of Warforged and these just high end hoity toity class. And they look you guys up and down and goes one you overhear one say who are these riffraff they're not even I'm Charles who cares and they move and they move past you and a suitcase hits you in the side as you uh as they pass by you oh hey that was rude they asked and they move up to uh, train 12 and they're like, be careful with my suitcase as uh, these Warforged are helping lifting it in. Like, I don't get what's the point of being snooty with a Warforged. Don't rich people believe they don't, they're like not people? Yeah, we can't get into that here. We have to find our train. And then we can uh, Yeah, we can't we start. We can't start another revolution. We don't have the time. <laughs> uh, it would be fun, but... It would be fun, but we were asked to get on this train, so... Alright, that was train 12, so we went up a couple too many. No, you, you saw them head towards 12, so you are... Uh, okay. You're like at 20 right now. And you look at 17, and what you see is... It's almost like a double-decker train. As you enter up to the train, there's a person in, like, uh, a uniform and comes up to you and it's like, Tickets, please. Jay will hand over the tickets. And he punches a hole into it that 
uh, says Sharn, uh, the Sharn Lightning Rail Station. He's like, here you go. Uh, your, this is your car. Uh, the suite is on the bottom. Up above is the common area walkway. Um, please make sure that we are not responsible for any lost items. If you happen to lose any items, that is on you. So please lock the doors behind you. Thank you. Uh, real yeah, quick, thanks. Could you, and I'll pull out my mail journal. And could you tell me how to spell our destination? So you are in Sharn, and your first destination is First Tower on your ticket. And then you got to go to uh, Rot, and then you are going to uh, Starless Sakur. Then Vatharond is your last destination before going to Salvation. So we're ending at Salvation? Yes. Christ, we're ending at salvation. I hate this. Yeah, we're we're all dead. <laughs> uh, perfect. Well, Thank you. Oh, no problem. And is there a uh, is there a bar car? Uh, yes. Up above, there's tons. Uh, from your suite, all you do is go up the stairs and into the common wall area, and every car has a common area with a themed room. Welcome to the Sharn Lightning Rail. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let me explain what these these trains look like. So you walk in into train 17. It's like a normal train where you get the little stairs up. So you now you're on the kind of in between the two train cars, and they're attached by a little like metal hook to the train to your right. So you walk into the left, there's a door, but there's also this stair that goes up to the upstairs. And the door has no window to the, on the door, but it has a big 17 on it. And it's unlocked right now. As you open it up, there's this just beautiful suite. You own the whole train right here on the bottom section. So there's a lounge area, there's tables belted down, there's uh, there's uh, chairs belted down, there's several sleeping areas, there's a bathroom. There, I mean, this is decked out first class uh, train. Sweet. Yeah, for some for some reason, I feel like we're walking into a trap, and we've like, we've waited way too long to point that out. <laughs> and they're oh. like, oh, the train is like, four minutes till we leave to first tower. Four minutes, all aboard. Uh, all right. If y'all want to start looking around, you can. But I'm gonna sit down and get a. Uh... Uh, last minute plan ready just in case. What was it? How much how long does it take to cast that? Okay, while he's doing uh, that, Jay, what are you doing? Um Jay will just uh wait with a wizard and keep watch. Okay, and Kurgan, what are you doing? I don't know, I guess I'm uh exploring our cabin, maybe looking yeah. To see if there's anyone left anything in the cabin previously. Uh, okay, give me a perception. Perception? All right. There it is. Tola 20. Uh, th they, at this, they do a thorough cleaning. Everything is pristine where they need it. Like, it's be like no one left anything behind. And Charles, what were you doing? Yeah, I was I was uh, casting um, Tiny Hut and then condensing it into the beads, yes. which takes ten minutes. Yep, uh, no problem. So we'll have started going by then. Yeah, by then. Boarding at least. Okay, as you're doing this, the train kind of like starts to sh shake a little bit, and then as you look out the window, it's not 
uh, Charles because he's concentrating. But Jay and Kurgan, you can see these lightning from underneath come shooting up. And they're like, please, no hands out the window while we're traveling right now. And, and then the trains, at a slow pace, start to build up speed. And then... And now it's zooming past as you see that if if you weren't on a spaceship that went 500 miles an hour uh, an hour this would be amazing but uh, it's like we're just like yawn yeah all right another day another super fast vehicle but on top of that you do hear uh towak say guys what are you what are you guys doing and uh we can I can feel you guys moving in, at a pretty big rate. What's going on? Uh, so we are told to get on a train. So we're on the train now. Apparently we're gonna supposed to find something here. Uh, do you want us to follow you or just hold tight? I mean, I guess you can follow us while you're in the air in space. Yeah. I don't think that's a problem. Maybe I got, just in case, I don't want you to get out of range of teleport. Yeah, that'd be for the best. Yeah, okay, I'll keep it, keep it range here. All right, so he is gonna keep a range towards you guys. And what are you guys doing? Well, well, I, uh, my spell, I guess that uh, we should start looking for signs. Yeah, as soon as he's done casting things, Jay will just go around and help him look for anything that, like, hey, we're supposed to find something here. Go check out. I think see we should probably start at the bar, right? The common area. Yes. So, as you, the first thing you see as you open your door is the car in front of you. There is, uh, you can see there is a 18 door. Uh, on the other side of the train with this secure railing so no one falls right out and uh -huh, everything uh -huh. pretty secure and there's these stairs leading to your left that go up after you okay so, so we'll head first then okay you get up to the top concourse and you open it up and the first thing you hear is jazz music and there's this man playing a piano and there's a couple of people maybe about five or six are sipping drinks and talking they're in really fine clothing and a couple of women are talking to the piano player and they everybody stops and looks at you guys as you enter and uh, nice to oh, meet you. Oh, come on, just because I'm blue. Go <laughs> <laughs> now, you see that this top section is connected to the train next to you, uh, almost like a walkway. And you can see down that train, and there's more uh, people milling about. There's a pretty good walk path that you can go all the way down the train on this top section from your left and right side and there's hundreds of people uh just milling about enjoying themselves gosh we're supposed to find someone in all this okay i'm gonna try and find something magical and i'll just like step away for a second and cast detect magic and i know that the train's gonna glow like crazy yeah. So I'm just gonna try and channel it like on all the people. Okay. And, stuff. and I know that like, they've got the the feather fly or feather fall tokens under the seats. So I'm just looking at the people. No feather fall tokens here because oh. you're on a train. Those are for the sky ships. These are oh, pretty. Gotcha. But here there are very numerous magical items. Uh, rings, there's some of the, everybody's wearing like a ring or two or something magical, maybe a necklace that's magical. 
Um, I, I don't think you see somebody that looks rich that doesn't have a magical item or two on. There are some servants and waiters that have no magic items or anything magical, but th everything else is pretty gleaming. Okay. And would I be able to tell, like, if there's anything, like, extra powerful or whatever, like... You can give me a like arcana yeah. dis disadvantage, please. Cool, 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 cool. Ten. A ten? Nope. Okay, cool. Uh, Everybody has magic stuff. We're in an open area, so there's no, like, so, like anything high up for Jay to perch on, right? Um, there is nothing you can perch on unless you go out of the train and go to the top. There, you uh, definitely could if you wanted to go out of the train and go on top. But would he be able to see in, inside the train, like an vantage point on everyone inside? Um, there are skylights, uh, that are on top of the train in some places, so you, yeah, you could if you wanted to. That's, that's a little too dangerous for my blood. Uh, yeah, Jay will just, uh, look for anyone, uh, sus anyone who looks like they recognize us. Okay. You can roll me a perception. 29. Um... You're getting eyes from a lot of people. You don't belong here, or you don't look. You look out of place. You look like the only people who dressed for, up for a Halloween party. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they're all like, what is going on here? Why are these, these people wearing, like, armor and swords and robes? And then why is this guy carrying around a diary? Let's yeah, why is this guy carrying around 80 swords? Why is that guy freaking <laughs> wear wielding nothing but fists? Why is that why is that guy casting spells? Help. Now, there is a person, he comes comes up to you. He's he's probably like 40. He's got salt and pepper beard, really finely dressed. And he goes up, he's like, now this is interesting. What what What's the story behind this? Who, who are you guys? It's time like these. The Jay just looks to everyone, his his pals. It's time like these where I realize we need to really come up with a name for us, other than Bellinax boys. We don't have a name yet. We're like the we were... crew. We're the crew of the Bellinac. Yeah, that yeah. works. We're the we're the crew of the Bellinac. Oh, okay. Is that a? Is that one of these uh, train carts? Nope. Uh, no, nah, it's a... It's sky a ship. Fancy, oh, yeah, fancy Navy sky ship. Uh, uh, oh, you are part of the army. Oh, you must tell us about mm -hmm. the stories that you had of the, the Hundred Year War. I'm so uh, glad it has ended, but I do believe we're on the brink of war again. Uh, I'm afraid I think we're giving off the wrong vibe. Uh, not army, more mercenaries that we serve, so. Mm. I do say, my, my work is very dangerous. Do, uh, how much do you charge? Uh, what's your work? Oh, well, I extract fine metals. Actually, don't extract them. I, we locate them. We look for dragon shards. I see, uh, that is a very lucrative field. It is, it is. Actually, I do do happen to have a knack for it. If you get my drift, we know how to find them and where to sell them. Made have y'all quite... seen the, the, the giant shards up in the upper atmosphere? As we were coming uh, in, we noticed them. Coming in? Coming in from whereabouts? Uh, we um, had a weird fog thing I was messing with looking uh got lost for a little bit um fog thing what uh you none of us are clouds. the engineer or the navigator we mostly work uh we, we work when uh i'm i'm personally part of the boarding crew we board uh, other ships <laughs> need to roll deception here 
Yo, we're great. We have the best <laughs> lives. Give me, give uh, me deception. We do other one. stuff. We have a, a, a one. Happen. That's not gonna be hard to oh, beat. Oh no. Not not a natural one, but a one. I mean, Jay is part of a boarding crew. He does often board he, things. He, he raises but, you an, know. Yeah, he raises an eyebrow and he's like, eh, "I know when I'm getting bullshit, and it's okay. I understand. We all have our secrets. I just, I just like to hire." the best and you guys look like you've seen some action if you're ever in need some work you look me up janos talmari janos talmari yes i have a great crew how long are you gonna be on the train uh we're sightseeing so we don't know maybe uh, we'll stop off once we come up with something interesting uh it's always good. No course of action. Let the wind take you where you need. I wish that was my way. But alas, I have more work to do. It is great to meet you all. I'm uh, sorry, just real quick. We're, I have a little uh, thing, interest. Uh, who's your favorite baker in uh, Shnard? Favorite baker? That is a good question. Now... This is going to be a high DC if he knows who this, and that's not going to happen there. He's like, well, baker, I have my own bakers. Who, who bought needs to buy it when you have your own chef? Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, great to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And here, and he holds up a drink, and he's like, to safe travels on the lightning rail. And he pours a drink down. I'll drink to that. All right. What a nice fellow. Sure, he's never committed yeah. any. And he's moving on to business his, practices. If he's moving on to a different circle of people talking. All right. What are you guys doing? Hey, my internet cut out for a little bit. That oh, was great. You missed uh, out on the really. Oh my gosh. So no, I I was there for most of it. Um, we finished a conversation with Janos and then my internet cut out and, all, and I replied and I was like, everyone's being real silent for some reason. <laughs> yeah, um, so you dip. Uh, oh, I, I, I turned to Charles. Um, so are we just going to ask people who their favorite baker is in Sharn <laughs> and see if that does anything? Well, I don't know. Do you have a better plan? Not really, no. I mean, the best plan is look around, see if anyone has black eyes. Then Jay stands up straight, looks around. Does anyone have black eyes? We're only a perception. Hey, can we finally get that elusive natural one? No. 25. Everybody's got normal eyes. Yeah, not here. Um, so yeah, I personally I think, we just... think that our DCs on perception checks are super, super high, only because <laughs> of that rogue. Yeah. Oh, only because listen I haven't even taken skill expert yet come on well, gotta bump uh, this perception to plus 20 it's no I I wouldn't do that too much uh I would <laughs> yeah too purpose, much purposely I if I wanted to do it for Jay I'd do disadvantage but I would never pro personally hurt like the whole everybody with a low with a high but yeah, I well, gotta make I gotta make it fun. <laughs> um, um, so I think we either wait around. See, yeah, I really only have two options when there's nothing, no leads. I either wait around or start a fight. Those usually take me until we get to a proper lead. Yeah, I, well, as much as I want to fight everybody in here, I'm not sure if that's the best course of action. Yeah. Um, Guess we look around, see if there's anything interesting still, and w I mean, we could wait in our suite. Come on, just chill on our suite for a little bit, and then come up, see if anything's changed. Sure, sure, yeah. Probably uh, the best idea we've had recently. <laughs> okay, so you're um, heading back down to your suite? All right. Yes. Uh, yep. Heading back down to the suite. All right. Not not a problem. You just came up. 
the, you you just walked upstairs to the peep, the common area right upstairs and walked back down. So you're back in your suite. What are you guys doing mm -hmm. here? Gonna wait a good 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah, no probably uh, the first stop. It, we could it, just like check all of the stopped people. Yeah, I just, yeah. Not come on at the next point. <laughs> I think Jay just wants to wait 30 minutes and then go out to other train cars. Instead of going, all right, we've stood in one for five minutes. Good yep. job, team. But we need to we need to think about our next plan. Yeah, the, the lightning yeah, rail have... slowing down uh, to a quick little town to pick up some people in out. It's probably going to be there for about five minutes. Anything you guys want to do in this five minutes? Um, should we split up and each take a car and look around? Yeah, but if one of us finds something, then we have only one person. Yeah, and well, no. I can move. Split the party. We can all move fast, but only one of us can teleport. Uh, yeah. Hmm. And so... I could talk to one of y'all, and y'all could talk to each other, but y'all can't talk to me. Yeah, um, let's just start clearing train cars, see if anyone reacts negatively to our presence. Fair enough. Okay, so right, we're just train parade, car we're cleared. Just, yeah, we're just parading through the train and seeing if anybody... <laughs> you can see parading through the train? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, everybody roll me a perception. Alright. Nat, nat one for the boys, nat one for the boys. 24, 11, and 18. 18. So in the five minutes, you can't really, uh, as the train stops, there are, you guys make it through one train, your, your normal train car that you just went through. Now, are you guys going in the, for your, your 17, are you going into 18, 19, 20 or 16, 15, 14? Um, I Work think. Do we oh, do we get to punch those pretentious pricks in the. Oh, in so place. go down, go lower, or go lower no, so we go true. to higher classes? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, 16, 15, 14. I mean, if there's something bad on this train, it has to do with the rich people, right? Exactly. All right. Okay. We're allowed to move between train cars, right? Nothing up, stops us. Up on the top. Yep. And when you okay. go down, so you're going from 17, now you're going into 16. And as you go into this place, it's more of like a cigar smoking car. And the smell of tobacco is in the air. And there's men sitting in these lounge chairs, smoking cigars, talking about things like stock markets and, and stocks yeah, bonds and golden bond, parachutes yeah, yeah. So they're all definitely evil and <laughs> and yeah and there's once you cross over there are once you cross over into the next car there's stairs immediately heading down to your left and then you can walk into the common area so that stairs down would go into the suite of car 16. Do we get that? Yes. Okay, awesome. So you're in this cigar lounge area and everybody's like, uh, this ser uh, servant comes towards you uh, and he says, would you guys like a cigar? Sure, uh, good, might as well. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm good, thanks. One gold piece, please. Oh, uh, I changed my mind, actually. That's Jay good. will hand him a gold piece. Okay. No, nah, no, nah, it's fine, it's fine. Save it for a hot dog or a drink. Okay. All so, right. So, did you get one, Jay? No. Uh, sure, Jay will get one. He's immune to disease and poison. Okay. He'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. All right, so yes. you have a cigar. Uh, the other guys like start snickering at you, Charles, as you as they asked for a gold piece and you kind of like patted your pockets and then said, no. 
Fair enough. And what are you guys doing here in this cigar room? Um, anyone not liking the look of us in terms of I don't uh, know. Insight? Anyone looking? Oh, like, you guys, yeah. Whoever wants to check out, we can roll me an insight. Ooh, not good. Nope. Ooh, better. Okay. <laughs> So, wow. What did you get? Oh my god. You I got, got a one. Oh, beautiful. Total of three. Natural it's very one. smoky and it's stinging your eyes, but Charles, you're used to this uh, cloudy, smoky type of environment. And you see that uh, they're not like disdain. Well, the disdain of just higher end people to the lower class. And they look at you like. What are you doing in our world? We're too good for you. And I don't think anybody recognizes us. Should we keep moving? Mm hmm. Yeah, keep moving. Let's see if we can find something in the next car. All aboard! Lightning Trail heading out! And people kind of stiffen up as the train begins to lurch forward, and <laughs> all of you have. Roll me a. Dexterity saving throw. Anything yeah. above a ten, please. Oh. Oh God. Um. I'm worried. Dex Wait, save. Wait. Advantage on yes. Dex. Yeah, you do get advantage on Dex. Okay. Oh, thank God. I got a natural two for a three, but my advantage gave me a total of seven. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kieran, this thing starts heading out you trip a little bit you stumble into uh the person holding the scars the scars fall onto the ground the guy lands on top of this guy spilling his drink in his lap and there are like oh my what is how what is going on here how dare you and he stands up and he's about oh gosh, five so foot sorry. three and he then he he looks up at you and he says, "It's okay." And he sits back down. I'll uh, I'll start helping them gather up the cigars okay. and just slip one into my pocket. I'll, slide I'll hand. help too, but I'm not going to slip anything. I'm I'm actually going to apologize to the guy. Slide Twenty-six. Oh, nice. You definitely. Dang, my rolls are doing good. I know. Nice job. Natural twenty. Okay. okay. Yeah, you palmed, you palmed, uh, 1d4. Go ahead. Nice. All right, let's see. Two. Yep, you pal, you, you got two pretty high-end cigars, and you're able Wait. to get them. All right, and now the train is moving along. What is Belknap's crew doing? Um, continue on to the next train. Find some, yeah, guess so. yeah, some sweet, sweet, suspicious activity. Okay. Uh, as you open the next train, there is a bunch of there's like a party going on here with a bunch of women dressed up in like very elegant dresses. And they're like, excuse me, this is the ball just for the ladies of Corvair. So if you do not mind, please remain out of this car. We're trying to get from our cart to one down that way. Well, How else are we supposed to do that? You can, but just you're not allowed to stay here, please. Mm -hmm. uh Jay will be polite and quick in his pace. Okay. Um, and we'll also, while doing that, make sure no one's do another check to make sure no one's being a little, okay. a little hmm. insight for me. <laughs> Any of these ballroom dancers I can punch? Dirty <laughs> funny? Please no. punch them all. Oh. No, these ladies are uh, not, do, do not seem to be up to no good. <laughs> Rude. Okay. Alright, so now it's cart 14. 
as you go to cart 14, there is a bunch of rich people gathering around talking and there is like servants passing out drinks. What are you guys doing? Um, yeah, Jay, will just big enough to check any of these. These people gotta be suspicious, right? <laughs> no, 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 another another insight check? Yeah, go for it, please. 25, getting better and better. So, you do not see anybody that is uh, up to no good, but someone looks familiar to you. It's a go. woman, and she's dressed like a servant. And she has uh, a, a couple glasses on, like a platter. And she looks at you, and her eyes grow wide. It's April. I was going to make a fucking joke go. about that. <laughs> it's go. April. And she's like, what? She whispers, what are you guys doing here? Oh, we actually I thought this have... was your idea. We have tickets. Yeah. The guy you sent us who gave us tickets. Yeah. Keith, the baker? Uh, okay. Well, I'm here following up on a lead that you gave us. Hint, hint, squid. Hint, hint, house Kenneth. Hint, hint, don't fuck this up. Okay. And she works, what? she works her way up and says, oh, would you like a drink? And gives the drink to somebody as they pass by. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jay will, uh, raise a hand for a drink, and while she gets close, um, what exactly are we not supposed to do here? Like, cause a ruckus. I've got a lead. I can't talk right now, but meet me in your... What, what trainer car are you on? You must be, like, a hundred. How'd you... Sweet 17. What? Sweet A. You're in 17? Holy cow. Okay. It's loaded. Keith owes me big time. Okay. I'll meet you there when this shift ends and I'll give you the skinny. Now, don't fuck this up. And she works her way through the crowd and out of sight. Not out of sight. You can still see her, but away from you. I have a right. our car, gentlemen. Yep. And as you head back to your train car waiting for what April has to tell you we'll end this episode here hey no hey